In the fall of 2008, the critically acclaimed documentary film, IOUSA, was released in theaters nationwide. The film warned of America's rapidly growing national debt and its implications for the country. No one could have predicted how much worse the situation would become in just 19 months. Consider these facts. In 2008, our federal budget deficit, which is how much money the U.S. government needed to borrow to pay all its bills, rose dramatically to $459 billion. Last year, due to extraordinary economic conditions, our budget deficit exploded to $1.4 trillion. That's over $4,500 for every American. And the total projected deficit over the coming decade will be $16 trillion. What about the national debt? In September of 2008, the national debt was $9.6 trillion. Today, it's almost $12.7 trillion, a 32% increase. That's nearly $41,000 for every American. And our budget deficits and national debt are only part of the problem. If you were to add up all of our nation's total liabilities and unfunded promises in Social Security, Medicare, and other programs, you would get over $62 trillion, $6 trillion more than in the fall of 2008. This is how much money our federal government would need invested today to pay for our nation's major liabilities and promises. How much of this $62 trillion do we have today? Zip. That's over 200000 for every man, woman, and child in the United States. For decades, our leaders have warned of the dangers of our large and growing national debt. Part of our trouble is that we have been self-indulgent, and now the bill has come due. And yet today, the situation is more dire than ever. Understand, if we don't take meaningful steps to rein in our debt, it could damage our markets, increase the cost of borrowing, and jeopardize our recovery. I refuse to pass this problem on to another generation of Americans. We didn't create this problem. We weren't the ones who spent the money. We weren't the ones who left the bill for someone else. We didn't ask for this problem, but we are the ones who will have to pay for it. A great nation cannot stay great if it can't keep its economy strong. Let me talk to you about a way forward. Doing nothing is not an option. It's not an option for our generation, and it's certainly not an option for future generations. There are many possible solutions to our fiscal problems. We will discuss some examples to illustrate the kinds of changes that should be considered. Many combinations are possible, but what is critical is that we get started. The failure to make the choice now of how to pay for the government we want is to dump the choice on our kids who will have no choice. So one of the calculations we need to make is, is that okay? Are we okay with that? And this time, rather than talking about the problem, we're talking about solutions. Chicago, Illinois. 150 members of the millennial generation are meeting to discuss the financial challenges they are facing. This meeting followed on the heels of 80 million strong, the inaugural gathering of millennials that focused on the economic condition of their generation. I'm Maya Nista and I'm the CEO of Mobilize.org. The millennial generation definitely shares a sense of urgent need to take action to improve the economic state of young America and put all Americans on a sustainable path. It's very difficult for our generation because the debt situation, we're the one inheriting that, we're the one paying it off. You know, I think the important thing about bringing all of these young people together with, with different ideas for solutions is that we learn from each other. Hi everyone, my name is Ryan Shenicky and this is Brandon Atchison and we're presenting our project, uh, WeCan'tPayThatTab.org. The national debt represents the government's inability to live within its means. So I, I don't think that it's a Republican or Democrat issue, it's really a, it's an issue for everyone. I think the solution to it is going to be multifaceted. It's going to have to be fought on multiple fronts. We can't afford for something else to happen. I think the really scary part for us is it's kind of being handed to us on a plate and said, here you go, have fun with this, congratulations, this is your problem. So there's this pressure to figure it out. 
The national debt, or total federal debt, includes money that the government owes to programs like Social Security and Medicare, and debt it owes to the public. Because public debt has direct impact on the economy, it's the number we pay closest attention to. By the end of the year, the federal government will owe an estimated $9 trillion to the public. So just how much money is $9 trillion? With a number this large, it helps to compare it to the size of our overall economy, our gross domestic product. Our GDP is estimated to reach $14.6 trillion by the end of 2010. This ratio is known as our public debt to GDP and is the number most experts use when discussing our national debt because it is a way to determine how much we have borrowed relative to our national income. By the end of this year, our public debt to GDP will be approximately 62% and growing quickly. As with any loan, the more we borrow, the more we have to pay back with interest and therefore cannot spend in other areas. Within 12 years, interest will be the largest item in the budget if we don't change course. Since 1789, the year our federal government was formed, we've had our ups and downs with the national debt. Wars and the Great Depression created high debt levels, but we'd always been able to bring debt back down to manageable levels, even after World War II, which is when our debt to GDP was at its highest point ever. Then, beginning in the 1980s, the national debt began growing quickly, despite the fact that our country experienced relative peace and prosperity throughout that time. Except for a period in the late 90s and early 2000s, when our government was running budget surpluses, our federal budget has consistently been in the red, and the national debt has been on an upward path as a result. At the rate we are going, we will pass the debt levels we saw at the end of World War II in just 10 years. Well, the debt crisis we face is entirely of our own making. We have chosen to borrow so much money and now we borrowed more and more from foreigners. Last year, of the money that we borrowed, 68% of it came from foreign sources. Those foreign sources are warning us that they're increasingly impatient with our inability or unwillingness to tackle this debt explosion. If they would decide not to continue to loan us the money, we would then be in a very tough situation. We would either have to raise interest rates dramatically or cut spending sharply, or raise taxes dramatically. This is what debt does. It constrains you and puts you in a position where you're not going to be able to respond to crises that may confront future generations. If we stay on our present course, in a little more than 20 years, estimated spending levels will be twice as large as projected revenues. And debt held by the public will exceed 200% of GDP. Life in America especially for younger people who will be left to pay these debts, will be much different than it has been for their parents and grandparents. <laughs>